Out there, put your headphones in while I'm live on the show. Ignite your purpose. <laughs> Episode 91, and that may be a cheery face you're seeing there, but Max and I have just had a conversation. Um, and we're going we're gonna to title this one, uh, The Conundrum Juggling Good versus Evil. So Max has been Zen Buddhist um, practicing for about 10 years now. But he's also, for a couple of years, been involved in, in Krav Maga, which is a Israeli military martial art. Um, and it's used for self-defense, for, for observing uh, a, a scenario or an environment, and usually spotting a danger and extracting yourself before you get involved. But if you do, doing the, doing the damage <laughs> minimum quickly to get out, you go through it to get out of it. Um, and, and because of that, Max gets exposed, and, and because it's you know Eastern Bloc Israeli, he gets exposed to footage of um, parts of the world and environments that we don't necessarily see. We live in our own little uh, environments, our own little movies, and those nasty, horrible things that we're aware of, we can just change the channel and uh, and step back. So I think Max is going to have a quick chat about how uh, how he's been exposed there this week uh, and how it's brought up a lot of stuff and how he's trying to juggle the, uh, the good from the Zen against the, the, the bad of the, uh, the Krav Maga, but also the good of the Krav Maga, which is his ability to protect and defend himself or, or, or be more aware in an environment should he get caught up. So after that long, lengthy introduction from myself, John, I'm JB, Healthy Funky Free. I'm going to hand you over to uh, Positive Vibes, a lifestyle movement element of, uh, of this show who is Max. Roll with it. I'm going to drink my tea and um, shut up. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a tale of two completely different worlds, right? Uh, and it, it truly does solidify the statement of what you nourish yourself with is what you see out there. So the reason I got into Krav is I'm a little dude, man. You know what I mean? And it's... Learn to defend yourself. It's simple, simple to me. It's simple math. A guy came that I never have access to. Absolutely no different of a story than what happened to me with Soto Zen. Two guys from other sides of the world. They're here to teach. Universe put them in front of me. I signed up. Done. Um, so with the meditation part of it right now, we're on a little bit of a hiatus just from class. I continue my practice two times a day. That's a beautiful thing, but I'm not um, as immersed in it when it comes to seeing movies and having other people's talk and it being right in front of my face, although it's a practice I do every day. In that same realm, I've tripled down on Krav. So it is way more uh, prevalent in my reality right now. And we're training with people from the Eastern Bloc right now. And I am telling you that the footage that I am seeing, it... It shakes me to the core for starters, and then it's amazing how that footage then makes me perceive my world completely differently uh, from, you know, driving in traffic to, you know, people who are around me, um, and, and I don't want to say it's, you know, fear and anxiety, but it definitely puts me in a completely different state of always, and I don't want to say fearful, but always aware of the boogeyman as to where I'm in a Soto Zen state, which is just being aware all the time. And, ex, you know, expressing reality for what it is and, is, and is, and it is the fact is that I'm safe pretty much 99.98% of the time, right? Yeah. Um, so, John, I just wanted to really talk about that. Like, you are what you eat, not just physically, but vision-wise. Yeah. With and our, our thoughts. And our ears or yeah. our senses. Yeah. I'm going to just ask a question. I'm going to be the interview. I need, a, I need a mic. So I'll ask you the question <laughs> before you roll into it, and then you may be able to include this. In your answer, I don't want you to sort of completely change the direction you you were going to go. But would you rather have not seen these videos, or do you think it's a necessary evil? Uh, yeah, um, it is. It's you're, a, you're making an informed decision then with this. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a necessary evil, and you know, you and I both come from this place of positivity. Now we've been through shit, man. I've I've been beat up. I've been in fights. I've you know. This is life. I mean, it happens, especially when you're a kid, man. It's, you know, and it's not nothing serious, but it is life. So you and I have come up in that, especially you in the military, we're trying to put forth that, that positive vibe. And I live in, like I said, 99.8% of the time in positivity to see 
what the youth is doing in, in some of these videos that I'm watching and just uh, really all forms of life, you know, in all age categories, I just sometimes boggles my mind um, how we take life for granted. Yeah. You know, maybe not us, but how life is meaningless in, in other countries. Like it's, it's not as valued. Like life is not valued. Africa, life is cheap. Yeah. Really cheap. You know what I mean? It, and, and that is something hard for me to wrap my head around. It's no big thing, right? And and to see what that group herd mentality can do when they come into a pack is, you know, it, it, it just can't be our normal way to go. Do you know what I'm saying? It can't be our first thing is to to be that negative. It has yeah. to be a taught behavior, man. It has to be. It, well, but maybe it's a learned behavior or sorry, a, or learned, yeah, bias from from our environment. It's. I don't think it's. In, in, entirely isolated to sort of the, the Eastern Bloc communities, if, if you like. They may have more exposure to it, but I remember growing up in the, the football hooliganism uh, oh, yeah. that, I, I, that I came up living around and seeing in the media each, each week. And, and that was, you know, stamping on people's heads on the floor. And, you know, they're not a threat anymore. It's, it, it's completely brutal, but it's that, that when they get into that herd mentality. And I remember one uh, episode. Uh, particularly myself, it was me and a couple of men. So three of us, soldiers, mid to early to mid twenties, and we're walking through a park in the middle of Yeovil. It's kind of like the between the church and the community centre. And there was a group of about thirty to forty kids in different pockets. And we walked through, and we're having a laugh and a giggle. And one of these one of these kids went, "Are you laughing at me? Or are you laughing at my girlfriend? Or what did you say?" And immediately we kind of looked around and assessed the situation. And these are 13, 14, 15 year olds. And they're not even the 13, 14, 15 year olds from today who are that much bigger. And we immediately took the, the uh, right, let's take the defensive role. And we kind of got heads down and just marched out of there. Sorry, fellas, no, we weren't talking to you because then they'd switched off to the threat, which is the three of us in their area. So, um, you know, you just discussed what happened in, in the video you watched. Um, and this is females, brother. This is yeah. females while males watched. And I just, I don't, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen, we've all seen, you know, a scruff and a this and a that. But the extent it's getting to now, I just, uh, I, you almost want to be like an ostrich, right? You want to put your head in the sand and you want to believe it's not there. But like you said, it is a necessary evil to understand that it is there and to be aware. And like you just did, you, you, you got the hell out of that situation as quick so you, as you could, right? So you're on vacation and you're walking down and, and the street suddenly goes from being sort of, you know, lots of people in busy shops to one or two of the street lights around and there's a border. Look, it's having that awareness to think, well, actually, this is, a, it might be completely safe for people who live here and who are aware of here and they know I can walk down this side of the street, but not this side of the street, but it's that, that awareness. Uh, that, that maybe you get from being exposed to it. Um, yeah. And, and, and you just said the exposed to it. So like I said to you, like watching these movies, it's definitely, it, it definitely switched like something, how I'm perceiving my surroundings right now. And, and it's, I don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I then go in and I meditate and I think about how many trizillion more bajillion positivity there is out there. I'm yeah. sure there was, you know, gardeners and people helping each other out, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, yeah. it is amazing how powerful the negativity is because us as humans have that negativity bias, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we were already talking this afternoon about uh, feng shui and room clearing and, and energy fields. So, uh, and how you can have somebody walk into a room and you just oh. you feel the, the levels drop. But go, going back to the, the, you know, this level of violence that you've kind of not really been exposed to in such graphic detail. Do, do you think there's an, there's an element of um, people watch movies or video games or whatever it is and they get stabbed and then they get up and kind of hold their waist? And do you think it is? Yeah. People are I, just... I, I think, yeah, I think it's... Uh, what do they call that? We say it's training. Yeah. What's, what's that? Yeah, people, people ideas of, of, of what is serious or not, it's been diluted because in the movies they get patched up and they're all okay. Yeah. And the way you see people holding a gun, if you've ever been trained to hold a gun, which you have, I know there's a proper way to do it. It's not like, you know, you know your figure is never on the trigger. There's so yeah. many 
proper ways to do it that you have to respect the weapon you have to respect the body you have to respect the opponent there's so many things and i think yeah i think it's so diluted that it's you know uh, and and how you would like what i watched and i'm not like by no means am i a, you know crazy but i'm not naive either right what i watched was like how would they learn that like yeah uh, you know where would you learn that gang pack mentality unless you'd viewed it somewhere right so that that's a sad thing, and that's our society, right? From the video games to the movies to and, uh, but to, to see females doing it to females at that such a young age blew blew my mind. Was, yeah, man. And there's a slight digression here. We apologize for this, but a friend of a friend whose daughter, whose friend, been self harming or something. She's like eight years old. Where where did you learn that? Yeah. Where does that come from? Because but, and or what happened to you? Yeah. To then be like that, right? Yeah, it's uh, and that so, it kind of marginally connects again to yesterday's conversation of we're growing up and we're having everything done for us, or we don't know how to. It's easy to, it's just easier if I do it instead of the child, or and you get in this class because dad knows this, or you get this job because your mum knows this. But all of a sudden, people get into these positions where they're they're left on their own, and mum and dad aren't there. And then they're getting fired because they can't do the job, and they have they've got the pressure, and then they're getting these mental health problems. Yeah. That's kind of skyrocketed through so this generation, and I believe next generation will be will be lurks. Oh, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It, it says it, it says something for I mean that's a whole other conversation. We can't cope. But... Yeah, we've lost this, yeah. this coping mechanism, but uh... yeah, and and we Just... kind of lost reality with what is right. Yeah. So, uh, and on that note, I would say for anybody who has females in their life, daughters, man, put them into self defense courses, put them into any type of martial art because, and males, little guys like me, I mean, it's better to know something than know nothing. And we're never suggesting that they're going to be able to go out and take Bruce Lee on, but it's just that spatial <laughs> awareness of what is less safe than that environment, especially if you're yeah. going to go traveling around the world. Absolute prerequisite for uh, for me and my my nieces will be getting uh, be getting some training before they disappear in the you know foot affairs. Uh, exactly, uh, and, and, and even if if it's just to give you that two seconds so you can get away, that's that's yeah. that's worth the price of admission, right? Uh, it's just it's just been a bit of a ramble today. It's not necessarily that much for you to 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 take away as big learnings. It's just throwing these ideas in the air. And we create a conversation, get a dialogue going, and oh, and, and truthfully, like you said, it's what you what you put in is what you see. That that's my biggest takeaway from this. Yeah. Okay. As always, John, I appreciate you. As everybody, I, we damn well know on this end, you can be anywhere in the world, and you rocking with the best. And we appreciate John. I appreciate your time. We will see you tomorrow as we always do. Ignite your purpose. Tomorrow will be 92. Today was 91, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're pushing close to uh, 100 off this variation. We're still working on uploading that load to YouTube. We'll probably just upload it all. And, you know, as long as one or two pop at the top, then you'll find all the others. But uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in, Max. Absolutely blessed uh, to have you as, uh, as my, my partner in crime. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Okay, brother. Bye-bye.